Hey guys, this video has been in the works for a while, so I hope you enjoy it or at least find it interesting. I'm going to break this video into two main parts. First, an overview of each device's features and costs just to give context. And second, the part which you are all here for, a semi-in-depth performance showcase. As always, the parts will be timestamped so you can skip to whatever interests you. Starting with devices and features, with the cheapest device coming in first, the PVS69 Echo. These are the third generation of PVS69 and are 3D printed homemade digital night vision goggles that use IR FPV drone cameras. These can be either built as a monocular or binocular. Mine only has one tube in it, so it's a monocular. These can be built for around $300 or for around $500 to get a pair of binos. The Echoes have a 97 degree field of view and is a non-magnified and non-1x. They use dovetail for mounting, take two CR123As and get around six hours of battery life. They also take external battery packs that can be plugged into the bridge. There are tons of different generations and iterations of the PVS69, and this housing is not the current housing generation, but both the current and my generation use the Night Eagle 3 sensor and V760A3 displays, so performance should be pretty similar. The MVG10 is a newer digital night vision monocular that has been becoming increasingly popular recently. These can be bought for around $350 to $400. Mine was sent out to me for review by the guys at Goodnight Gear. I'll have a full review on it pretty soon. These take a rechargeable 18650 battery and have a battery life of around 3 to 5 hours. They feature a focusable lens, a true 1x view with about 15 degrees field of view. This is, has a built-in IR illuminator and mounts using a proprietary J-Arm system. Lastly, my 3D printed Analog Gen 2 Plus monocular. My last MVG is an analog monocular I built using a 3D printed housing. For people that aren't aware, analog NV performance is mainly based on the image intensifier tube, not the housing or model of night vision. My monocular has a rebranded Photonus XD4 autogated image intensifier tube. Because my tube has a funny format, finding information on it has been pretty hard, but it should have a FOM around 1600 minimum, which is pretty in line with most Gen 2 Plus analog night vision units. It takes a single CR123A and gets around 40 hours of battery life. I should note that I have a C-mount lens on it instead of a PVS14 lens, which bottlenecks the device. The lens still gives a true 1x magnification with 40 degrees field of view and has a built-in iris to adjust depth of field. This is standard with about all analog monoculars minus the iris. It's hard to put a price on something like this, but if you wanted to something that performs similar to this, you need to pay around $1250 for a used unit. Good deals and ways to make this cheaper exist, but when I make a full length video on this unit, I'll discuss that. Besides all that, Gen 2 Plus Monos are very popular for budget analog right now, so I think this will give a good idea on budget analog performance. Here's a quick spreadsheet of basic information involving each device. Some things to clarify. This performance comparison is purely based on the images these night vision units can create. This does not compare important things like refresh rate and input lag. I am not paid by any companies or anyone to make this, and I have not edited or skewed footage in any way. Every shot is taken from the same distance away with the same basic camera settings. The last important thing to note is that the IR illuminator used for the NVG10 is the built-in IR illuminator. And just because it says IR on, that does not mean the IR illuminator is on. The IR illuminator is only on if it reads IR 1, 2, or 3. I know it's confusing and I don't quite like it, but that's just the way it works. The IR illuminator used for the PVS69 in the Gen 2 Plus system is an IR flood I've mounted on my bump helmet. And as always, please feel free to ask any questions in the comments, I always read them all. Before we start, this is a guide of what info will be where to refer to if needed.
<laughs> You're still talking. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it. And uh, as you guys could kind of see, this thing's been a while, uh, works for a while. It's been almost two months since I started this. I hope you guys were able to take something away from the video. Um, as always, there's a lot more stuff coming and thank you so much if you watched all the way to the end. Um, that's all I really got for you guys. Uh, cool stuff coming in the future and uh, thanks for watching. Oh, and uh, as always, I always forget to some do some part of this. I do plan on doing uh, another comparison in the future, 
maybe with some different devices. I will definitely make a second part to this where I talk about more of the refresh rate in my opinion on these devices. Uh, but for now, this is a better just performance, purely intellectually based, uh, non-opinion based video. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it here, thank you for watching in general. Um, bye.